Hello everyone, welcome to Brush Sauce Theater, episode 27. And in this episode, I'll be talking about uh, building a solid foundation to kind of create a painting or a concept with. Uh, and this mostly includes gathering the right references and setting up a sketch. Hello everyone, I'm Tyler Edlin and I'm back for episode 27 here. And this this episode was inspired by a question from YouTube uh, from a, a viewer named uh, Jez. And she was asking about what do you do to reference or research. Well, I do a lot. And I basically, if you put, uh, I have a sample here, you know, the pillars of visual development. And the top of this can represent your final product. Illustration, concept, design you know, photography, whatever you have, you well, not photography technically, but you know, your, our, our artistic project, so to speak, is at the top. And uh, generally within at least the realms of the entertainment industry that can be, that's supported by three pillars, you know, the drawing, the value and the color. And that's kind of how I more or less, in the most simplest, uh, the most simplistic way I categorize how I'm thinking about going about getting my references. So first we start off with the design or the concept, uh, and, you know, and that, that, that kind of takes up, uh, takes up most of the drawing aspect of it. You know, we're actually drawing, we're designing out a scene. You know, how it, how the shapes and the forms work, you know, the composition. Next, we have the value. How is our scene lit? You know, is it light versus dark? Is it moody? Is it, you know, atmospheric? You know, is there contrast or is it, you know, what kind of color key is it? Or, no, well, not color key, but what type of, uh, you know, value setting is it? Are we doing a high key uh, image or, you know, low key or a full, full range of values, this sort of thing. And then la the last pillar is kind of mood, and that can um, be easily indicated, of course, by your color choice. So, uh, and I can break down a few of these now with for uh, with a few examples for um, most of you guys. So, all right, for this for this scene, I had to do a, a sketch of kind of like one of those imperial type of Roman, uh, Romanesque Senate types of images. And so here's just some of the, the reference I kind of gathered. And here, let me just kind of pin it around here for a minute so everyone can kind of take it in. Um, and what this kind of breaks down to uh, is uh, right here. Uh, we have photography, concept art, you know, existing concept art right here. Um, you know, classical paintings, uh, movie stills, and uh, even, uh, what is this, 3D models. You know, just so I can fully understand, I'll do whatever it takes as an artist to kind of fully understand my setting here. And once I kind of reference all that, um, if I'm uh, this is just to kind of show I'll reference anything. You know, no nothing's off the table when it comes to, to getting the job done, and I'll I'll research anything I can. Uh, and so that would this would kind of lead me into the next step, which is just kind of doing my sketches. And I and this kind of has if this indicates uh, the drawing side of things. Now we kind of go into uh, my mood here, which, uh, well, not my mood, but my values. And some of these are really kind of good already for their value structure. And I, I'll, I'll block out the scene just as simply as this. I mean, from here, this is making all the statements I want, you know, in its most, uh, again, in its most simplest form, I've got a focal point here and here. And it'll be, the scene is about an interaction between these three characters and the character up here. And it's obviously, and then, you know, we got surrounded by kind of like the Senate seating. And if I were to kind of commit to this and push it a little bit further, what we would have is kind of something like this, where I just take that existing uh, sketch and I kind of flesh it out just a little bit more. But value structure wise, as I talked a lot about way back in episode one, this is the same thing, the same kind of deal we're talking about. Um, and then if I was really going to go and research color, I would probably look up some more paintings like this or indicate, you know, these in terms of uh, you know, th these would be some of what I researched more, and that could be, you know, looking up movies, uh, doing you know classical paintings again, or you know, I, I always kind of look more towards um, classic paintings in general in terms of getting my color. They're just there's a really kind of raw and traditional feel to them, and then I also like looking at movie stills as well, something from like uh, Gladiator or you know Julius Caesar that show Rome. Because uh, they are they're they're d uh, done by really kind of high end professional cinematographers, and they again uh, can capture a scene or a mood really really well. So I'll kind of look at both and try to combine them. Is what it kind of comes down to, and I'll just I'll build them up. I'll reference. I'll put I'll put sheets like this on the side, right? And then I can go on to drawing these, and you know do all the uh, you know all the sketches I want or whatever just from this, and I'll have this on the side, and I can pull it up and look at it. Uh, so that kind of takes care of a lot of that. Uh, 
But again, this kind of comes down to, well, what do you research? You know, well, this kind of comes down to what you want to, uh, what you want to paint. So for, I know for this assignment, um, I, I kind of break it down into five keywords or topics. Uh, I don't know if anybody else does this, but it works. It works wonders for me. Uh, so what do we have here? I'm going to design an interior during the age of antiquity. And it's what kind of interior is it I'm asking now? Uh, it's going to be like a magicite refinery chamber, something mystical and magical. Uh, and for my architectural reference, I'm going to do something like in Baroque. And I want it to have the feeling of grand or, you know, some kind of grand feeling with eeriness or, you know, it's ominous as well. Something like that. And then from here with these keywords, I keep them here. And as I'm drawing and sketching, uh, I will that I can just refer to them to keep and it keeps my momentum going forward So I'm not kind of drawing myself in circles or wasting time So if I'm just kind of generally kind of starting out and sketching a scene um, I just kind of rough in either with a perspective or geometric shapes Maybe what the core kind of foundation of the scene look like and this was just kind of done uh, You know in terms of ellipses because I can't draw ellipses that well on Photoshop This comes from using this uh, ellipse tool right here and I go to mode um, shape right and then it watch this i can just keep adding different uh ovals or ellipses in here so i knew this was this round in particular was going to be circular and that's why i chose this approach uh anyway from here i can kind of tone down this opacity and kind of begin to rough out uh the kind of the core components of this room or scene you know just kind of the big shapes think of things like that and then you know i'll go and go grab my reference which I think in most cases, uh, I, these days anyway, I'm putting over in uh, Pinterest. Pinterest is just such a great way for organizing and setting up reference. Uh, let me just take a moment here to go to my uh, my account. Uh, and I think I have one somewhere called, you'll see like this example, classical art. Just one board in case I need to go reference figures or you know how they do their color palettes. I just have this whole board of kind of classical based art that I reference. And the, the good thing is I had, they have their name right here or right here but you can click on one because i only wanted to save one from each artist it will it will kind of bring up more of that that flavor on its own so and it, again it's not taking up my hard drive space so that's one way i'd like and i prefer to reference uh so for this one you know i think i have one down here somewhere architecture design stuff anything that's kind of like so I wanted to take that Baroque type of stuff, the Neolithic, and I wanted to kind of cross-reference it with some of this uh, Art Nouveau style. So I have a lot for the details in my scene, which I'm going to be sketching next. I would go and gather a bunch of things like this, you know, even architectural drawings or old photographs, anything. I mean, look at these shapes. They're magnificent. I, I was, probably wouldn't come up with this on my own. So this is helping me build my visual kind of uh, vocabulary up for when I come back and um, I'm doing the scene. So, you know, from here, I basically just, I would lower the opacity again and do another pass. Uh, and that that's kind of having it look like this now. See a lot more details, a lot more depth. And I can just keep going on by the le levels of detail I want. Do I want to detail or texture in here? Do I want to break down this? You know, as far as you want to go. I mean, I mean, I'm playing with the idea now. This isn't done of some pillars, extra frontal pillars around here. This one's a little out of place, but you get the point, right? You can just keep going and simplify and... I would reference each thing I need to add. So basically, you know, let's call this a finished drawing. What I have to do next is reference, uh, you know, the, the mood and the colors so I can kind of commit. If it's kind of some type of ethereal, uh, you know, fantasy magic refinery, I'm going to probably have fun with that, get some purples or greens, have things glowing in here, and then kind of combine it even with some of these more kind of classical uh, approaches. Now, what I was originally inspired by this, of course, was some of those... Uh, kind of renaissance based architectures things that kind of look like this this is i would say this is kind of like that key kind of image uh that i was inspired by um sorry it went to edit itself it's right here this one and you know, uh though it's low res here if i think if i if i bring it up it'll it should make it a little higher res so you guys can really get into it i mean these are just from google i always just use basically google or flick uh flicker just find whatever uh, images I can but I was really inspired by this fantasy you know based chamber I'm doing now for for a game or something and I'm I'm really inspired by the, the uh, real world because we've just you know as men we've uh, you know uh, you know our race has created uh, lots of amazing and wonderful things and we can reference back to this and keep inventing on top of it nothing was kind of built you know in a day so to speak uh, so that's kind of how I break things up 
go about doing them. So for instance, one more example in terms of what I've referenced, I had to do this kind of slummy type of medieval scene. Now something like this doesn't require quite a broader range of reference because it's really style, uh, it's already kind of set a, a tone and, a, a, and a, a, a mood and it's something, you know, it like 14th century or something, very established. So I don't have to really invent, you know, I'm not inventing anything new here. So I'll show you my exact reference folder for this scene. I, I kind of categorize them and I'll open up uh, basically what I need to. So here we go, textures before I delete it off my computer or upload it or lose them. For whatever reason, that I've, now's a good time to do this episode. So I, I type in, for instance, on this one, right? Renaissance fair, peasants, those three keywords. And I got, you know, awesome people from my scene now, actors. You know, I'm, I'm researching different, I'm thinking, you know, what kind of, you know, warm little kind of cozy medieval towns there are, uh, you know, and I'm thinking of that movie, you know, How's Moving Castle. So I go to Google and I type in How's Moving Castle Town. And I eventually, through the ropes, I, I, I find out it's inspired by this kind of town, which I actually don't have the name for it here. But, I mean, that's exactly something I kind of searched. You know, I, and then, again, I have stock kind of silhouettes I build and make. So if I need to drag and drop actors into my, my environment scenes, just for, for scale purposes or something like that. Um, and then another research I use is um, a resource I use is, is stock photography sites. So in this case, Brick Old Mixed. This came from one that I know used to be kind of called uh, cgtextures.com. Uh, now it's just textures.com, I guess. And they give you 15 free downloads a day. You can obviously buy more if you want more, but I'm I'm fine with you know free a day. It resets every 24 hours, and you can go in it by category. Um, it's subdivided again, and you can just get textures or references for the things you need. It's really uh, convenient. Uh, the next thing, and that's where a lot of these kind of came from. And then, you know, I'm trying to think of all the kind of textures in my town. So, you know, shanty buildings, all the kind of, you know, slums, you know, all these kind of keywords I'm putting in. Tudor style housing. Bricks, there's just so many kind of textures that can build up these old medieval style scene so I'd, I'd reference basically with this one every kind of texture and again more of that uh you know if i wanted to show i wanted to contrast the poor setting by having the taller buildings and the uh the higher society kind of overshadow them from the backdrop you know and you know referencing mud for the ground i type in mud or you know muddy field kind of keywords like that anything that can get me the images i need free range chickens for example you know from my scene my little my little guys Hey, bat, hey, pile. You know, it, it's 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 probably a lot easier than a lot of you may even think it is. It's just literally put using as few words as possible and putting right in the Google images the, the exact same things you want to look for. So yeah, I I gathered. You know, this was what twenty or thirty images for this scene that I used to rest, uh, research and reference, and I'll do that all before I I begin, of course. And then once I get going and I have my sketch and that gets approved, I can just cruise on through to the, uh, you know, the final. So that's kind of everything, you know, down to the wood <laughs> that I, res I, I referenced for this scene. And you can see it all in here. You know, I got the, my actors from my uh, my Renaissance Fair, my, my livestock, my, my tall kind of wealthier buildings with the, with the slummy poor ones and all the textures that kind of make up them. My hay pile, uh, my wood. You know, my wood, uh, another wood pile. Everything I could think of that might be in a scene like this, you know, lines that close that I exactly didn't put in yet because they were a little too intrusive at this point compositionally. But yeah, and a lot of that, you know, just think for what you need for your scene. Do I need, Do I? am I stuck on the design? Am I stuck on the drawing of it? We'll research that. Uh, do you not, do you do a good drawing of it and then you don't know how to light it? No, you go, go research, you know, movies and film or existing art like you know for example a lot of the those images i just showed you was uh they were they were photo textures and still things but for the mood and the color for this scene uh i in, i looked up some assassin's creed art and i found this one with a lovely mood and i referenced this mood for this painting did i end up i, I didn't steal anything from it but i you know it's, that's perfectly fine i don't feel bad about any but i this artist I, who i'm sorry i don't know the name of off the top of my head did an awesome job of coming up with a mood for this. And I tried to, you know, replicate that to some degree or other in my scene. So that's kind of how I kind of just think about things. So hopefully that'll help you and uh, keep on drawing and let me know if you have any questions, leave them below and take care. 
Now, this episode's question kind of comes from the Brush Sauce uh, community itself. So if you haven't joined yet and you're interested in it, it's a great little place. Everyone's welcome. You just kind of come, you make some friends, you post your work, and ask very specific questions on what you're kind of having trouble with or stuck with. For for example, if you're coming here, um, Adrian posts you know his, his image here, and he, he asks very specifically, is there any advice, you know, or critique to the background or how to improve the color contrast between that and the characters? And I, you know, just, I, he'd love advice on how to make it more dynamic and how to improve the bones of the piece before he moves forward. When you just say, hey, can I, the, the more specific you ask your questions, the better help you can get for anyone who hasn't noted, um, uh, hasn't realized that yet. Um, but anyway, for the questions, you know, Hugo first asked, how do I keep motivated about a piece? And uh, I found that he often burns out quickly when working, and is there a good way to setting goals? Uh, and then I'll follow that up with Antoine's piece. Uh, do you have any tips about balancing the amount of details? Because that, that's just a quick one. Uh, so kind of coming here, how do I stay motivated to a piece? Well, basically, I'm obligated first to do any kind of paying jobs I have. And in this case on my desktop, that would be this. Um, it's just kind of like a, a boring kind of treasury style scene. Very work in progress that I have going here. But not the most interesting thing I have to do. But that's what I have to do for work. So when I, when I, my reward for getting this done is to work on, you know, the the many other personal images I have uh, going. These are very, these are all kind of work in progresses. And, but like, I, I really want to work on those. That's what I'm passionate about. Uh, so that's kind of like my reward almost, you know, for doing the, 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 the you know the paying jobs in a sense uh and it, it you know i'll be up late and you know learning new things like i learned you know last night how i can pose these horses and i was messing with 3d and, and lighting them and figuring out how i can work them into my scene uh before it was just like i had these placeholder guys uh let me see where can i find it yeah it was just kind of very stiff and static and when i'm done with the final drawing over these guys oh, there's my oh uh, when i and give them a paint job it'll look pretty nice but uh yeah it's just kind of helping me like just, just discovering new things and workflows and that drive to improve you know to to give every every piece here of yours you know over a hundred percent you're giving it a hundred two percent hundred one percent rather than just kind of settling or capping things off at ninety percent for me like this piece i could have called it done but I, I, I had a very static falling down cape. But I went back in order to push myself, you know, to like 110%, let's say. I, I, I really wanted to work a dynamic flowing cape into her. I wanted to add her little army I'm kind of working on in the background. And just keep pushing myself, you know, till I, I can get the best possible piece. Uh, so, you know, just working on multiple things that I can juggle between. Solve different problems. Uh, and then, you know, like this is another thing I'm working on, which is just my portfolio uh, kind of layout and development, which is just like, you know, I make one PSD with like lots of different arrangements of, uh, you know, all sorts of how I'm going to present these images soon or upload them to my, my website. So that that's like a whole project in itself. And the lesson to be taken from that is you should spend as much time presenting your work as you do almost like putting into it because it's just as important. It really is. Um, Hopefully that kind of answered your question. I you're just being super passionate about what you're working on. Like if you feel like you're getting tired or burnt out from working on something here, switch gears, start a new piece, come back to it. You know, maybe you'll learn a new trick in the meantime. Um, but anyway, in terms of detail, uh, who, uh, Antoine? Yeah, I think it was Antoine who asked this one. Uh, as you can see in the background, or even with the character here, the trick is to find your first focal point and make sure that's the most detailed thing in the scene. So obviously with this piece, it's going to be the girl. And as I get into the far back of the, some of these characters, which aren't done yet, by the way, uh, but they, they won't, they'll get even more simple than these two guys, you know, I have here and just fade off and just fade off, you know, into the background. You can see how kind of rough and loose they are by comparison. But, you know, when we zoom out and we could, we could take them in as a whole. And this is the previous image I just completed, and I think this is a prime example of where to kind of loosen up and where not to apply detail. As you can see, it looks and reads really well as a whole. The only thing that's detailed in this scene is the girl. Look how rough. <laughs> Look how rough everything else is. Blobs of paint compared to the detail I have on her. Um, and that just helps really kind of simplifying everything. All the way into the background, they come to like... These are in-focus blobs, and in the background we have out-of-focus blobs. And that helps sell the depth. 
and keep the focus on her. If this is my primary focal point, I want to keep everything around her. All this stuff super out of focus and simple. Helps push it forward. Likewise with this, um, I'm going to make this character ultimately my final focal point. So I'm going to simplify the cloud read. Uh, you know, so it's behind it. And all the, all the primary detail will be into this guy. And these two by, you know, contrast will be much simpler. So hopefully that'll help you guys out. Uh, wh how do you guys, what are you guys struggling with in terms of detail? Let me know. Uh, do you find you're over, de over detailing everything? Or do you, do you have a, more of an issue under, you know, under detailing? For me, it was over detail. I just over detail everything. And it's, it's taken a lot of work for me to scale things back. Um, and what is your personal tips? And, you know, that you could recommend to people to, to keep you motivated in, during a piece? Or what does motivate you, uh, you know, to continue a long piece? Uh, let me know. I, I'm certainly curious. I'm sure other people are too. But until then, take care. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to click the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, please su click subscribe. I also want, thought it'd be cool to have a Facebook and Twitter. I know everyone else does, so why not? So be sure to follow these things, link below, and if you don't want to miss any updates. Did you enjoy what you just watched and are looking for a more in-depth, full-length video? Please check out my premium tutorial shop, Everyday Prices with Epic Results. And if, you're, if you want a guaranteed boost in your own skill, I also offer a one-on-one -on -one mentorship. Just email me now for a rates and availability. Missed the last episode and want, you can catch it right here. Well, that's it for me this time. I'll see you all in the next video.